Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and I hope all of you are as awesome as you've ever been. So as you guys know, I have been posting quite a few screencasts on my channel uh, wherein I record myself participating in lead code contests, right? And I am generally able to solve all the problems in uh, let's say around 25 to 35 minutes, okay? So as a result of that, I've constantly been getting a lot of doubts in the comments as well as in my DMs of people asking me how they can also solve all four problems in lead code rounds. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about just that, right? All right, so lead code contests, you know, they are fundamentally more focused on core data structures and algorithms. So unlike comparative programming contests, it is comparatively a little bit easier to solve all problems on lead code. Obviously, if you've done enough amount of practice, right? So uh, mostly you spend around 50% of your time in thinking and the other 50% of it in implementing. And that is why you don't really need to be very high rated on websites like Code Forces or Code Chef to solve all problems in a lead code contest, okay? So yeah, uh, in this video, I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step breakdown of how you can solve each problem, starting from the first problem down to the fourth problem, okay? Cool, uh, so let's start with problem A, okay? So this is generally a very, very easy problem, okay? And chances are that you will be able to solve it without the use of any data structures other than, you know, simple arrays or vectors if you use C++ and even strings sometimes, okay? So to solve this problem, all you need is a very basic level understanding of a programming language and simple logical skills, right? So I won't be talking much about it for this reason. And additionally, you should have, you know, a basic knowledge of mathematics, right? So things like GCD, LCM, etc. they are also rarely used in this problem, okay? Uh, so yeah, if you're a beginner starting out in your problem solving journey, I would advise you to practice by solving, you know, a few lead code easy problems. And once you feel like you have a good enough grip on the programming language that you're using, Solving around 20 to 30 lead code easy problems will pretty much make sure that you always end up solving problem A. Okay, cool. So now let's talk about the second problem, problem B. So problem B, this problem generally gets the medium tag. So this implies that it is a little bit harder than problem A, but it is definitely not extremely hard either, right? So again, it does not take huge amounts of efforts to be, you know, able to solve this problem. So if you've been practicing DSA for around two to three months, then you probably have sufficient experience for it, okay? So let's talk about what you should learn in order to make sure that you solve this problem, okay? Cool. So the first thing that you should be very comfortable with is called the template library of the programming language that you use, okay? So it's called the standard template library or STL in C++ and the collection framework in Java, okay? So the STL provides a variety of important data structures and methods, so which can make your life very, very easy as a problem solver. So functions like lower bound, upper bound, and data structures like, you know, set, map, etc. These are very, very commonly used at this level, okay? Right, and another topic that you should know at this point is binary search, right? So uh, it is one of the most important topics in the realm of DSA and comparative programming. Uh, all right, so uh, the basic flavor of this problem, you know, would be mostly some kind of an optimization problem. Uh, let's say from O of n square to O of n log n or something like that. And most of the time, this can be easily achieved with some data structure which is provided by the STL, okay? And other times it will involve some, you know, not so hard mathematics concepts like factors, multiples, GCD, etc. okay? So with this added knowledge and ample practice of a few months, uh, you will definitely get more comfortable with solving problem B in any lead code weekly or bi-weekly contest. So now let's talk about the third problem, okay? So uh, problem C is where, you know, things start to get pretty hard. So uh, if you notice the solve count of any typical lead code contest, uh, you'll realize that more often than not, there is a somewhat bigger gap between the number of solves of the third and the second problems as compared to that between the first two problems, okay? So this is generally because the third problem, you know, it involves a variety of topics. So in contrast to the limited number of topics which are asked in the first two problems. And the major difference comes from the introduction of a topic called dynamic programming, okay? So yeah, uh, dynamic programming or DP is a topic that most beginners are quite afraid of and especially in comparative programming and rightly so, okay? Uh, however, uh, for the purpose of solving problems in a lead code contest, you don't really have to be a master at DP, okay? So all you need is a strong base in understanding, you know, the traditional concepts of DP. So uh, the best way to learn DP for the purpose of solving problems in interviews and on lead code is to, you know, deeply understand all the traditional DP problems, okay? 
So you can start with the Fibonacci problem and if you don't have any idea about DP, okay? So from there you can, you know, keep building on it and solve all the other standard problems like the longest increasing subsequence problem, uh, the longest common subsequence problem, uh, longest palindromic subsequence problem, the edit distance problem, etc. Okay? So, you know, there are a lot of articles about them on the internet. So you can refer to multiple resources in case you face any difficulties as well, right? Cool. So you can, all you need to do is to try and make sure that you get comfortable with implementing those 2D or 3D DP solutions. Okay. Cool. So now if you're confident enough about your understanding as well as implementation of these problems, the next step would be, you know, to solve some, let's say uh, 20 to 30 DP problems with the medium tag on lead code and you're good to go. Okay. So doing this should definitely be enough to get you through any DP related ideas that come up in the third problem of any lead code contest. Okay. All right. Uh, so moving on, uh, other than DP, there are a few more topics that you should be familiar with at this stage. So the first one of them is called binary search on answer. Okay. So this is a very special and important topic uh, that can make your life much easier in a lot of problems. Okay. So binary search on answer is a tool using which you can solve a lot of seemingly hard problems very, very easily, right? So I would recommend that you go to the code forces edu section, which according to me is the best place to learn this concept. So you can find both lectures and practice problems there that should be enough to become confident in it. Okay, cool. So another topic that you should definitely learn at this stage is called two pointers and the sliding window technique. Uh, they again are very frequent in the third problem. Again, you can learn about them from a variety of articles as well as videos, which are already available on the internet. Okay. All right. So another concept that you should be familiar with at this point is the sieve of eratosthene or just the prime sieve. Uh, it is a well-known concept using which you can find prime numbers quickly and can be applied to solve a lot of problems. Okay. So you can learn about this from either geeks for geeks or CP algorithms, and then you can solve a few problems related to prime numbers and that should be good enough. Okay. So uh, these are all the things that you should learn. And now it would be time to solve a lot of problems. Okay. So my suggestion would be to solve around 50 lead code medium problems combined with a few hard problems, which have relatively more number of solves. So they might have the harder tag, but they are still on the easier side. Okay. All right. So then if you're comfortable with all the topics that I've mentioned and you've practiced enough problems, then you should be in a very good position to solve the first three problems almost every time in lead code weekly as well as bi-weekly contests. Okay. All right. So, uh, now that you can solve the first three problems, it's time to draw our focus towards the final hurdle, the hardest problem of the set, which is the fourth problem. Okay. So first of all, uh, the most important thing that you should keep in mind is that you should have faith in yourself and you should trust yourself. Okay. So a mistake that a lot of people do is that they either don't try this problem at all, or they try it half heartedly thinking that, you know, they would not be able to solve it anyways. Okay. So, well, here's the thing, man, uh, not trying out a problem will only make sure that you don't solve it. On the other hand, you may try a problem wholeheartedly. You give it all that you got, but you're still not able to solve it. However, trust me, you will feel much better in the latter situation always. Okay. And of course there is always that off chance that you indeed solve the problem, right? So in short, always make sure that you keep trying out problems in a contest till the very end to maximize your progress. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about how you can actually get comfortable with solving this problem. Okay. So we know that this problem is generally pretty hard. Okay. But what exactly makes it that hard? Well, uh, it's just that the topics that are asked are quite varied and also the implementation can sometimes be tricky. Okay. So <clears throat> first of all, a lot of times high level complicated data structures are involved in this problem. Okay. So you will have to learn how to use the data structures like segment trees, Fenwick trees, etc. Okay. So now you need to understand one thing that it takes time to get comfortable in using these. Okay. So for lead code, I won't say that it is absolutely necessary to learn the, you know, inner functionings of these. Instead what you can do to save a lot of your time is, uh, if your primary goal is to solve lead code problems is to use the black box technique. Okay. So you can simply keep a template for a segment tree and you can just blindly use it to solve problems, right? So uh, you can check out this video of mine where I've shared a generic segment tree template and I've also explained how you can use it. Okay, cool. 
so another extremely important concept is that of the monotonic stack and the monotonic queues okay so uh, both of them can help you find you know the next greater element in an array for all the elements and also the minimum or the maximum element in a range of a fixed size things like that okay so that makes both of these data structures extremely important okay so you can learn about both of these concepts from cp algorithms okay cool uh, all right so now that you know which data structures to learn and how to learn them let's talk about what else makes this problem so hard and what are the other things that you should prepare okay so again uh, let's come back to a topic that we started on with in the third problem which is dynamic programming so in the fourth problem you will definitely find good high level dp problems okay now since you can solve the third problem i assume that you are comfortable with traditional dp problems and have also practiced a few medium level dp problems from lead code okay so now the perfect way ahead for you would be to solve around 20 to 30 lead code hard problems involving dp and also go to the code forces problem set and solve around 10 to 20 problems with the dp tag rated around 1500 to 1800 difficulty okay so doing this would provide you with sufficient background to almost always solve any dp problem which appears as the last problem on a lead code contest all right so then another topic that is frequently asked at this level is that of graphs and trees so these are the topics that a lot of people you know try to kind of procrastinate in studying thinking that they are you know quite hard however this is not true at all so once you get comfortable with solving three problems on lead code you can definitely go for graphs and trees okay so uh, what you can do is you can first learn about dfs and bfs for which a number of resources are available okay so you can choose whatever suits you the best and then you can solve around 15 to 20 lead code medium as well as hard problems based on dfs and bfs on trees okay so uh, the next goal of yours should be you know to learn all the basic graph algorithms namely dijkstra's floyd warshall's and bellman ford's algorithm okay so you should learn about topological sorting in directed graphs uh again so you can learn about all of these things from a variety of tutorials which are available on youtube itself uh, and as always once you're comfortable with the theory uh, you should solve around 30 more lead code problems uh, based on graphs and trees right so you can keep the distribution as uh, let's say 20 hard and 10 medium problems okay all right so uh, with this uh, you are now fully equipped with all the tools that you will need to solve the last problem of any lead code contest okay now all that is left for you to do is to sharpen these tools by solving a lot and lot of hard problems uh, always remember uh, what makes the problem so hard is that it can involve the use of multiple topics uh, that you've learned in a single problem okay for example uh, you can have a problem which uses binary search on answer and inside the checker function of the binary search you have to apply some kind of dynamic programming right so things like that are quite common in uh, this problem okay and the only way that you can get comfortable with stuff like this is by practicing really really hard and making sure that you leave no stone unturned in your efforts okay all right uh, so this is it from my side in this video i hope this video will add some value in your lead code journey and you'll make more informed choices about the topics that you should study for lead code so yeah uh, thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next one